Hi everyone. Welcome to Piedmont Trails. My name is Carol. Thank you so much for joining me today. Today's subject is going to be about the Great Wagon Road. This is one of my favorites and I, I have been researching the Great Wagon Road ever since I was a young teenager in North Carolina. I was tracing the footsteps of a particular ancestor by the name of Felix Motzinger who was living in Washington Township in Pennsylvania during the year 1763. He decided to take his family, he had three small children, and his father, and he decided to travel the Great Wagon Road through the Shenandoah Valley of Virginia and settled in Rowan County, North Carolina. Following his footsteps and understanding the family history was amazing, and it, I was hooked from there. I wanted to know more about the Great Wagon Road. And ever since those early days when I first started in family genealogy, I, it didn't take very long for me to realize that I had a great many of my family ancestors who traveled this historic trail. So I'm happy to bring this to you today. Um, and moving forward with Piedmont Trails, we are going to be having several segments that will be solely dedicated to the Great Wagon Road and I'll have a separate playlist on the YouTube channel for those particular videos and I will also be sharing uh, new discoveries and findings from the Great Wagon Road project. I'm involved with about approximately a hundred other volunteers who are dedicated in researching and preserving the road and our ultimate goal is to have the road named as a National Historic Trail. So if you would like to have more information about the uh, Great Wagon Road project and or if you're considering maybe joining the project, I'll have details about how you can do that at the end of the video. But first, let's get started with a brief history of the Great Wagon Road, how its origins came about, and why is it so important to our family genealogy and to our national history. So let's get started with today's video. Thanks again for joining me. You are viewing one of the first travelers along the Great Wagon Road. Yes, it's a buffalo. Buffalo was prevalent throughout North and South Carolina, the southern portions of Virginia, and then westward. Um, the last known documented vision of a buffalo in North Carolina was recorded in a Moravian diary dating 1752 where the Moravians had embarked on the journey of traveling down through the Great Wagon Road into North Carolina and they spotted a buffalo grazing in a meadow. The buffalo were very vital to the first origin route of the Great Wagon Road as the Native Americans of the Iroquois tribes, the five nations, used these trails to hunt the buffalo and other wild game. These hunting trails became the Great Wagon Road. So as you can see, the animals made the first trails along the Great Wagon Road original route. And the Native Americans used these trails to hunt the animals to feed their families. Also, these trails were used as communication links between one tribe and another tribe and they were also used during, during wartime events between one tribe and another tribe. So the Native Americans began using these trails often and it's beginning to take shape as a major route. But keep in mind, during this time period prior to the 18th century, the trails are no more than a footpath. They're no more than a foot wide or two foot wide in, in majority of places. The animals were enticed to, to, for these natural trails that, because it guided them to natural waterways and it also guided them to natural grasslands and to natural salt licks. In fact, in Roanoke, Virginia is greatly known as a major salt lick natural habitat. In fact, uh, Roanoke was named first as the big lick that which associates to this. Also, in North Carolina and South Carolina, there were several areas in the region that were known as tall grasslands, prairie-like meadows, and this also allowed the buffalo and larger uh, animals to graze. So, 
the Native Americans used it as a hunting trail. We're beginning to see the, the shaping of the Great Wagon Road and how it became into existence. And now we'll move forward to 18th century and how the Lancaster Treaty changed the Great Wagon Road forever. During the years leading up to the Lancaster Treaty of 1744, many were already using the Great Wagon Road, which was known then as the Great Warrior's Path. They were using this path by means of transportation and migrating into lands such as Maryland, northern sections of Virginia, um, eastern sections of West Virginia. And many were settling in these areas, but they were being met with hostilities and ambushes and many raids by the Native Americans, as the Native Americans proclaimed ownership of this area. By 1744, the Lancaster Treaty became in existence, and the five nations of the Iroquois agreed with the treaty and allowed the colonial families to travel and transport all along the Great Warrior's Path. Now the Great Wagon Road has changed significantly, and it will grow tremendously in the years to come. So the years just after the Lancaster Treaty of 1744, the Great Wagon Road takes on new shape. Colonial families begin to hear of new opportunities being offered in the southern colonies. Land opportunities, religious freedom opportunities, will not have to necessarily pay taxes for a certain amount of time. This enticed the colonial families to take it upon themselves to pack their belongings, on various pack horses or little small carts and actually walk the Great Warrior's Path, which was now becoming known as the Great Wagon Road, into new areas. During this time period, Northern Virginia, um, Maryland, and West Virginia had already seen settlement prior to the signing of the Lancaster Treaty of 1744, but now, after the treaty, huge amounts of families began to settle into the Shenandoah Valley of Virginia and elsewhere. So the road was beginning to be used and over this time it began to be widened naturally. At the onset of 1744 the road in many many places is still a mere footpath. It's a foot wide. It cannot accommodate a wagon. It would be years before this uh, would naturally widen to accommodate the Conestoga wagons that you hear of or read about in the books about the Great Wagon Road. But by 1750, majority of the road was being, uh, you could travel it with a huge wagon filled with your items. Um, and by the 1760s, the wagons could meet head on and still have room to pass each other side by side in some places, not all places. Majority of families left after harvest, and that would be um, early fall, early autumn. And the trip would normally take around 30 days, a month to two months. You had to keep in mind about the weather. You also had to keep in mind about the floods, various floods, uh, storms, and sickness uh, with the family members. You also had to keep in mind of care of animals, the livestock, and also care of equipment uh, that was carrying your items. All of these played a major factor in traveling the Great Wagon Road during this time period. Also keep in mind that families very, very rarely traveled separately. It was rare for someone to see one family traveling by themselves along the Great Wagon Road during this period. Families always traveled in groups. So if you're suspecting a time period in which your ancestor traveled down the Great Wagon Road, keep, in, keep that in mind that they did travel in groups and oftentimes they would arrive in an area and they would settle the same area in the same groups that traveled the Great Wagon Road. 
Okay, so what was the original route of the Great Wagon Road? Well, we're working on that, but I'm going to give you an idea of what the original route of the Great Wagon Road is. And you're going to start out in Pennsylvania at Philadelphia. And from Philadelphia, you're going to move south in a southwesterly position all through the state, and you're going to get to Frederick, Maryland. If you um, research Frederick, Maryland, it's a fairly early establishment uh, settlement during the year, I think, 1732. Somebody might need to correct me on that. But from Frederick, Maryland, you're going to go to the Potomac River. From the Potomac where they cross, they would have to have a ferry. They would have to get across the river. From there, you're going to go to Middle, uh, Middle Way, West Virginia, in that area. It's another early settlement. From that point, you're going to travel into Winchester, Virginia, a very early settlement. And years later, um, which I'll share in, in later videos, but Winchester becomes a major cross thoroughfare uh, intersection. And there are going to be several paths leading out from Winchester, Virginia, leading elsewhere. But um, Winchester is a very early settlement in northern Virginia. You're going to have early businesses in this area as well. Um, and I'll get in, I want to say a few other things about that too. Then from Winchester, you're going to go into Roanoke, Virginia. From Roanoke, you're going to keep traveling south. And you're going to head into the North Carolina state border, state line. You're going to cross into North Carolina, then you're going to intertwine going south into Salisbury, North Carolina. From Salisbury, you'll hit into the Charlotte area. And after south of Charlotte, the road splits. And one section of the road, and we'll, that'll be a two or three videos on, on explaining the details of why the split occurred. And, but anyway, it does split south of Charlotte, North Carolina. From one path leads into Camden, South Carolina. The other one goes towards Union and Columbia, South Carolina. And then the road heads into straight into Augusta, Georgia through the uh, Savannah River. These are some other key elements that I would love for you guys to keep in mind when you're researching your family along the Great Wagon Road. Keep in mind of the time period, the timeline in which your family traveled. I always stress to everyone, when they ask me um, for references or, or certain techniques to use um, with their personal family research, my very first question with everyone is, what is the timeline? And it is so critical with your research to determine the years in which you're researching. But all along through the Great Wagon Road, businesses would, would be sprung up everywhere. You would have taverns, you'd have stores, you would have ordinaries, inns, so many businesses that your ancestor could have conducted business with. There are so many historical documents and genealogy paper trails associated with the Great Wagon Road. Once you start researching, you'll need to keep this in mind along with the timeline in which your family traveled to look and acquire these records. It's an amazing journey. You'll soon discover once you start researching the Great Wagon Road with your family genealogy, the records are enormous. Possibilities are out there. You just never know. You just have to look. So in summary of today's video, we first discussed the origins of the Great Wagon Road and how it was used by the Native American Indians. It later became a trading path with various men who traded with the Native American Indians. And this is how they learned of the path and they learned of the lands available south in the southern colonies. Then it later became a migration uh, path. But before all of this, it became a hunting path. And it was used by the buffalo which were known to be in this particular area of the Great Wagon Road. Thank you so much for joining me today. If you are interested in learning more about the Great Wagon Road project, please contact me and let me know. If you have questions about today's video or you have concerns about using your family genealogy in association with researching the road, let me know. I'm, I'm always 
here to help you guys. I'm, I'm eager to help and, and share my knowledge. I, like I said, I've been researching this road since I was a teenager, and although I'm not going to share my age at this time, but I'm, uh, I've been researching it for a pretty, for a fairly great many years, great many years. It's still fascinating to me, um, the discoveries that I'm able to locate along this great historic trail. But if also, if you're interested in joining the uh, Great Wagon Road Project, let me know. You can uh, either leave a comment here on the YouTube channel or you can contact PiedmontTrails.com. Um, we would love to hear from you. We have approximately over, just over 100 volunteers, right at 100. So we are growing and um, we just just started the project back in uh, late last year, 2019. So we're real excited of uh, all of our discoveries and of the Great Wagon Road and preserving the Great Wagon Road and its history. Our ancestors left an amazing trail to follow, and I hope that each and every one of you enjoy your journey to the past today. Thank you.